The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Evening news here on NBS, Antigua's News Authority. My name is Garfield Burford, a warm welcome. And I'm Sherilyn Beza. Thank you so much for joining us. So let's begin with a major developing story at this hour, this time from the courts. Murder suspect Linsome Anthony Boyd will have to answer two serious charges in the High Court. Prosecutors say Boyd killed 50-year-old Althea Henry and injured her 21-year-old son last year. Magistrate Conliffe Clark committed the matters to the High Court this week after ruling there is enough evidence for a trial. Boyd will get his first opportunity to plead guilty or not guilty once the new criminal court sessions start in May. Investigators say they found Henry's lifeless body at her Cashew home with multiple wounds on June 20 last year. They say Boyd attacked Henry's son, Tajma Francis, the same day, causing injuries to his left eye and upper body. We'll keep across the story as it unfolds. Now 55-year-old Everton Pinnock could spend the rest of his life behind bars after a judge found him guilty of major drug offenses this week. Justice Stanley John found the Jamaican man guilty of drug trafficking, importation of cannabis, possession of cannabis, possession with intent to transfer, being concerned in the supply of cannabis, and conspiracy charges. The charges concern 59 and three quarter pounds of cannabis that investigators discovered at Deepwater Harbor, July 2020. The drugs are estimated to value some 575 thousand dollars. Drug trafficking, the most serious of the offenses, carries a maximum sentence of life imprisonment. Well, the Antigua State College says it intends to lead the way with modern teaching resources following the dedication of its Learning Resource Center today. The college held a ceremony to unveil the new center, about which Jimmy J. Roche reports. Education Minister the Honorable Davil Matthew and the Education Director Claire Brown unveil a plaque at Antigua State College's Learning Resource Center Friday morning. Moments earlier, Pastor Everton Thomas anointed and blessed the building. Principal Jacqueline Richardson says it's been a long journey to the dedication ceremony. Beginning in 2008, with an $8 million EC dollar grant from the European Union Fund. Unfortunately, the assigned contractor could not complete the structure in the timeline stipulated by the funding agency and we lost the funding. As a result, the project remained dormant for many years until 2014, when the governor, Tegan Barbuda, received a US $2.2 million from the Car CARICOM Development Fund to complete this project. She says over the years, learning resources have evolved to include apps, digital resources, technology equipment, and necessary infrastructure. She says the Learning Resource Center will support this evolution. We intend to use this structure to remain competitive, innovative, and leaders in instructional practices. Over the past decade, our changing programs have included online classes, the, the introduction of robotics, a drones program, the delivery of short courses. Meanwhile, Minister Matthew says the college has changed much since he was a student some 30 years ago encourages the management team to continue the metamorphosis by building on the successes. I wish to congratulate you and your team, Mrs. Richardson, and the shoulders upon which you stand, persons like Mr. Ford and those who preceded you, and for those who will come after you. I wish to encourage you to recognize that the Antigua State College is steeped in history, and you all have an, uh, an obligation to be good examples and to be good ambassadors of this institution the Learning Resource Center includes a help desk, student affairs office, bursary, library, computer labs, training offices, conference rooms, and administrative offices. Jamie J. Roche, ABS News. All right, let's tell you about this story. Thank you so much, Jamie. Now, the world's attention continues to be transfixed by the unfolding developments in Eastern Europe as Russia's military pummels its neighbor from land, sea, and air. The 30-member North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, a defensive military alliance, has, has been sending troops to uh, prop up its eastern flank as Russia continues on the march through Ukraine. An attack on any NATO member state makes the other members duty-bound to defend that member under Article 5 of the treaty. But Ukraine, bear in mind, is not a member of NATO, at least not yet. 
Well, of course, as uh, that would make it benefit from uh, the same protection. Now, the invasion has led to fears of not only an escalation in the conflict, but also of the ripple effects for the supply and prices of essential items such as food and energy. Now, this, uh, makes, uh, this was made clear last evening by Antigua and Barbuda's top diplomat in Washington, D.C., Sir Ronald Sanders. So are Antiguans and Barbudans monitoring the developments in Eastern Europe for the potential impact on their pockets? We took to the streets this afternoon to gauge their views on the issue. What is going on over there, we are going to see increase in goods and services. We are going to see an increase as it relates to oil price. I would not be surprised if before this day comes to a close, we will see the price of oil on its way back up. So really and truly, it's a saying, and we can confirm the saying, when the bigger fella sneeze, we catch coal on this side down here. We, in the small countries, want to suffer. Well, there is, while there is concern about this war will have serious consequences for the world, there is also optimist, uh, optimism that diplomacy will result in a de-escalation of the conflict. Take a listen. It's how they, they, they communicate and how they talk to each, each other. That's how things are going to work out. So you're positive? Yeah, I, I'm positive it's going to work out fine. In other national developments, the Antigua and Barbuda Tourism Authority has big hopes that the once thriving romance destination product that is Antigua and Barbuda will be making a comeback this year. Special Projects Events Manager at the ABTA, Shermaine Jeremy, shares how COVID-19 has affected that segment of the industry. What's happened is COVID came, things have kind of slowed down. A lot of couples have had to put their plans for getting married, even honeymooning on pause, or some have even canceled. Yes, we did see some weddings still happening. We did see some travel. However, nothing close to what we've seen before in the past. The ABTA officially launched their romance campaign, Love and Wanderlust, on Valentine's Day. Jeremy explains the campaign's aim. The Love and Wanderlust campaign is essentially going to position Antigua and Barbuda as a safe, a, an accessible, and a desirable dreamscape fairy tale destination for couples. So that's essentially what the campaign is about. Jeremy adds, it goes beyond the idea of a simple romantic getaway. People are wanting to travel more and more. And as a result, they want to travel and do other things. Getting married is one of them. You know, after you've gotten married, you now want to bring your kids and have a family vacation. So it's, it's, it's extending beyond just the wedding for us in terms of our strat marketing strategy. Meanwhile, Showcase Antigua Barbuda is back. June 8 to 10 this year, we'll see the return of the country's travel trade business to the, to the destination event. In its seventh installment after a two-year hiatus, the event will now also focus on presenting the destination's offerings of culture and heritage, wellness, romance, as well as yachting and sailing. There will be a welcome event on June 8 and a full day of business meetings on June 9. This will be followed by an exploration of the destination on June 10. The event represents a partnership between the Antigua Barbuda Hotels and Tourism Association and the Antigua and Barbuda Tourism Authority. Looking forward to the highly anticipated event, Chief Executive Officer of the Antigua and Barbuda Tourism Authority, Colin James says, and I quote, we are more than ready to wow our travel partners, some of who will be making their first visit back to Antigua and Barbuda since the pandemic, end quote. In commenting on the importance of Showcase Antigua Barbuda this year, Executive Director of the ABTA, Patrice Christian Simon adds, and I quote, giving our partners the opportunity to experience the destination firsthand is important now more than ever, end quote. Well, a major developing story this evening. The Antigua Public Utilities Authority, the APUA, is again assuring its customers of ongoing work to improve water supply. The utility says it's now about 1.5 million gallons uh, short of where it needs to be to meet daily demand, but expects that deficit to be erased by the end of June this year. 
and by later on in 2022, it expects to be producing in excess of daily demand. In the meantime, the APUA says the water being produced at the newest reverse osmosis unit at Fry's Beach has been improving supply to St. John's. This evening, we begin a weekly series called Waterworks 2.0 to track the APUA's progress in improving supply of the precious commodity. A gleaming new plant which has been installed thanks to a grant from the government of Japan it's been fully operational for over a week now, producing 350,000 imperial gallons of desalinated water per day. It is already making an impact, according to the APUA. With the additional water that is being produced at this facility, we're now able to send that excess water into St. John's. We do have plans to establish a product tank and pumps that will pump that excess water into the Grace Hill Reservoir, where it can then be distributed to the major areas within St. John's. The quantum we are still calculating, but we are estimating it could be anything in the region of two to 250,000 gallons per day. That would be excess from this plant. This is the fourth plant in operation at Fry's Beach. Together, they produce 950,000 imperial gallons per day. At present, the APUA produces 6.5 million gallons of water per day, most of it from reverse osmosis plants, since there is no surface water because of the drought. There is another paltry 300,000 gallons produced from groundwater sources. The daily demand is now 8 million gallons, and the APUA expects to produce that amount of water by the end of June this year. Another step will come by the end of April. The second plant we're looking to bring online is a refurbishment project that we're doing at Crabs. We have two older units there that have been refurbished. When they come online, we'll add an additional 1 million gallons per day. And then we're expecting that to be online probably the end of April. The next step is to get to 8 million gallons by the end of June. The third um, facility would be the Fort James plant, and that should be online towards the end of June. Now, once those three plants are online, we expect to be just equal to what the demand is. So come the end of June, we should see a marked improved in terms of APU's ability to distribute water to the majority of its customers. Beyond that, a plant to be installed at Bethesda is expected to take the APUA into excess territory where it will have what it calls spinning reserves in the event one of the plants is being maintained. I asked Mr. Lewis why it has taken this long to produce enough water to meet daily demand. He said the APUA started looking at meeting 100% of daily demand from RO plants as far back as 2018, but two funding sources did not prove workable. That's when a local bank stepped in. third option we had, which was going to a local bank, and in this case, it was the ACB who approved us funding. And this funding was finalized, I believe, in the latter part of 2020. And it has taken some time to um, execute the plans we wanted and for the delivery of the product. So it has basically taken us, what, um, four years? in order to be at this point and we had looked at several funding sources that did not pan out and um, we're here now um, with what is a better late than never and that we can assure the public once we have finished our installations including the Potesa plant uh, Antiguans will be able to enjoy a much better lifestyle in terms of the availability of water on a 24-7 basis. Producing water from these plants is expensive, five times more so than if it is harvested from surface and groundwater sources. But how confident can the public be in these assurances from the APUA? I put that question to APUA project mechanical engineer Brian Nicholas. We are indeed um, working and there's actual proof that we are actually doing work in order to alleviate this, this situation. In addition, the APUA shows us this graph indicating it has significantly increased the production of water from desalination. In 2010, just over a billion gallons were being produced each year from this method. By last year, the figure had reached 1.8 billion gallons. The blue line shows water from desalination and the white and orange show the much smaller amounts from surface and groundwater sources. Meanwhile, the parliamentary representative for St. Mary's South, Honorable Samantha Marshall, is pleased with the increased amount of water being produced from the Friars Beach reverse osmosis plant. 
So we're very happy for this. It allows our farmers from the agricultural aspect to um, be able to do more in terms of production for food security. And, of course, it brings a lot of comfort, um, greater comfort to the residents um, in the area. She says it also benefits the hotels and commercial entities. Minister Marshall conveys the reactions of constituents. We've been told by constituents that there's been an increased um, supply of water. It is more um, regular. Um, and also persons just on the border of our constituency, in particular the old road constituency, we've heard them say that they've had an increased supply of water also. The St. Mary's South MP says there should be a constant supply shortly once the Antigua Public Utilities Authority addresses some challenges. Minister Marshall expresses appreciation for the new unit installed at the Fry's Arrow plant. And I have to go on record as thanking the Japanese government for their support because truly the Arrow plant was a donation. We were assisted greatly by Ambassador Davin Joseph in making it happen. And so I have to go on record as the Minister of Agriculture thanking them um, greatly for their contribution to the Ministry of Agriculture and which by extension to the people of Antigua and Barbuda. Now, the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Barbuda Affairs has received a major boost. Two new tractors purchased from CPI Equipment Services Limited will augment the ministry's fleet. The proprietor of the entity delivered the tractors and their keys to both the Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Samantha Marshall, and the Director of Agriculture, Gregory Bailey. Liaison officer within the ministry, Marcel Freeland, says the tractors will serve the agricultural stations and farmers within the various districts to enhance agricultural production and increase local food security. Well, the High Court is advising of changes to operations as it relates to child maintenance. Effective Tuesday, the 1st of March, all child maintenance funds will be collected at the family court on High Street upstairs Ryan's building. Maintenance payments will continue to be disbursed from the magistrate's court. Now, maintenance payments can be made between 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mondays to Thursdays and 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Fridays. All visitors to the family court are asked to observe the dress code which includes the following. No spaghetti straps, no sleeveless attire, no halter tops, no two tops, no short pants, no dress above the knee, no slippers, no tights, no tight-fitted tops, no short, tight-fitted skirts, no vests, no torn or ripped clothing, no ripped, washed collar jeans, no revealing or exposing of any of the body parts. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to more of the stories that we've been keeping across for you this evening on the ABS Evening News, including this one. Housing and Lands Minister Honorable Maria Brown lauded by the soup kitchen for her long-standing support. And later, students at Freemansville Primary immersed in the nation's culture during a special event at the institution. You do not want to miss that one. We'll also give you an update on what the uh, PAHO, the Pan American Health Organization, is saying about COVID. Upcoming on the ABC News, on air and online. Stay with us, please. At Magico. The things that matter to you, matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Magico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Janserve is committed to keeping Antigua and Barbuda safe with our mass sanitization program. Our methods are safe, effective, and efficient, and eliminate pathogens, mold, bacteria, and viruses, especially COVID-19. We are introducing the EPA-approved Victory Innovations Electrostatic Sprayer and Vital Oxide Disinfecting Sanitizer. Our solution is even safe to use around children. It's odorless, easy to use, and will disinfect areas and surfaces for up to five to seven days, depending on application. 
The electrostatic sprayer atomizes the molecules of the vital oxide to adhere itself to all surfaces. It's much more effective than wiping. We are committed to using the most advanced sanitization methods for the safety and health of everyone. For the cleanest clean, contact JanServe today. JanServe is a service mark of the Akima Group Incorporated. The first house calls in March will be epic. Tuesday, March 1 at 8 p.m., Dr. Chanel Joseph discusses anxiety disorders. House Goals delves into the area of mental health in another informative episode. Causes, detection, and the treatment of anxiety disorders. Join the conversation on television, radio, and online. Tuesday, March 1 at 8 p.m. Don't miss it. Join the good life with iNet Fiber. What's the good life? It's a life with strong, unlimited, reliable, fast fiber internet from iNet. Speed starts at 50 megabits per second for $189.99 per month, which includes access to a special mobile plan starting from $75 per month. Go boldly into your digital life with the world's most advanced broadband connection. Need a strong internet connection with fast upload and download speeds for video calls, gaming, and streaming? Then visit inetfiber.apua.ag to sign up or upgrade to the good life with Inet Fiber. Prior to the discovery of Antigonite, since 1981, we have offered unique jewelry in both silver and gold, as all of our clients deserve authentic, indigenous mementos, whether rings, brooches, bracelets, or earrings. The Gold Smithy, Redcliffe Key, St. John's, Antigua. Visit our website at www.goldsmitty.com or call us at 268-462-4601. The National Youth Parliament Association of Antigua and Barbuda welcomes you to Manifesto Decoded, a series of panel discussions dissecting the political manifestos presented to the electorate of Antigua and Barbuda over the past 50 years. Join us on ABS Radio 90.5 FM and Facebook ABS Television Radio as the National Youth Parliament Association of Antigua and Barbuda raise awareness on the importance of political manifestos. Well, welcome back here in tune with the ABS Evening News. There is no end date to the COVID-19 pandemic in sight. So says the Pan American Health Organization's Director of Health Emergencies, Dr. Sira Ugarte. He says, while many have been calling for an end to the public health emergency designation, which COVID-19 now has, no lifting of the designation will mean the pandemic has ended. The potential lifting of the emergency declaration by WHO does not have any relation to the quote-unquote end of the pandemic. But here's a question. Can anyone accurately predict when the pandemic will end? It is a mistaken point of view to say that we can be accurate as to when the end of the pandemic will be. There will never be a specific end day. Well, the health emergencies director says it is very likely the SARS-CoV-2 virus will operate in the future very much like the seasonal flu. SARS-CoV-2 is the virus which causes COVID-19. He adds he does look forward to an end to high incidence of serious disease and death. COVID-19 was initially declared a pandemic on the 11th of March 2020. Now the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and about Oh, my apologies. The Soup Kitchen is continuing to express gratitude for the long-standing support of a member of the government. Honorable Maria Brown, who has supported the Adopt a Family since 2014, visited the Soup Kitchen today. The Soup Kitchen coordinator of the initiative, Inspector Veldon Raggi, says she's been instrumental in providing food items, making network connections, and sourcing equipment. He says Minister Brown, one of the first official partners since the Soup Kitchen's opening, remains a consistent, remains a consistent supporter. Today, she gave of her time serving approximately 100 warm and tasty meals. Members of the Soup Kitchen expressed their gratitude. 
Well, the nation's culture was on full display at the Freeman's Village uh, Primers or Freemansville Primary School today. The school hosted a fair under the theme, Embracing Our Culture, providing an opportunity for students to be immersed in the Twin Island States' cuisine, music, and traditions. Take a look. Grade 5 teacher Anthea Thomas says the idea originally came about when the students were studying customs and culture, and one topic was the national dish. Thomas says she wanted the students to have an opportunity to taste all the local dishes. Today is like um, National Heritage Day, and so we decided to use this day to have that food display for the students. And so we call it Local Food Day, so we had everything local for them. A spread of local dishes, drinks and snacks were available, as was local music. Dishes included dukuna, dumplings, ground provision, mackerel, seasoned rice and pepper pot. There were also local drinks and an assortment of sugar cakes. Even dialect was used on whiteboard. The students could be seen dressed in African attire, having a grand time learning to make Johnny cakes with Principal Jasmine Morris Baptiste. Cheryl Inves reporting for ABS News. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to news overseas. One of the stories that we're tracking very closely for you is... More reactions from the region to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. You will hear from the leaders of Venezuela and Jamaica. And later, Ukraine desperately tries to repel the might of the Russian war machine as the insurgent reaches the capital.